Hallelujah! Another Sunday morning, uh, afternoon, and uh, just a beautiful day that the Lord has prepared for us. Today we have a special, special uh, hour of empowerment, a special guest uh, who we all love and, and cherish. Uh, she's going to be, uh, this is our friend and our sister in Christ, uh, Reverend Carol Dickey, uh, who is anointed by the, by the Lord uh, to preach the word, but also to sing some beautiful Amen. songs. Um, she is going to be bringing up, uh, I didn't get the, 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 the title of your message. Oh, it's a watch who you allow on your journey. The title of this is watch who you allow on your journey. On your journey. You know this is going to be a powerful message of the Lord is going to be coming, bringing you. So get those pens and papers ready to take notes because the Lord is going to be doing something mighty today. Amen. With that, I'm going to ask uh, my sister, Minister Carrie, to come up and open us up in prayer. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So privileged to be opening up in prayer for my sister and my friend who I love, who is a glowing example of a commitment to the Lord. It doesn't matter how you treat it. It doesn't matter what people do to you. When you are committed to the Lord, you maintain Amen. your commitment. Amen. And Amen. we see you, uh, Reverend Dickey, and we are inspired by you. Amen. Praise God. We love you so much. Amen. Praise God. Let's go into prayer. Praise Lord, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Father praise God. You. We thank you for your will, Father God. We thank you for your calling, Father yes, God. Thank we you, thank you that we are here to do your business today, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We thank you for the woman of God here today, Father God, that yes, you have Jesus. blessed us. Yes, you have Lord. blessed us with all the experience and the maturity, the spiritual yes, maturity, Father yes, God, God, that we will be fed today. Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. We just give you all honor and glory, Holy Spirit. Yes, we yes, cannot Lord. wait thank to you, feast Jesus. upon what you will give us today. Yes, the words Jesus. that will come through the mouth of our sister, yes, the, the, the correction, the edification, yes, the Jesus. rebuke, whatever it may be, Father God, we yes. are ready to receive today. Yes, we Lord are Jesus. ready to receive from you, Lord. Yes, Father God. And we just give you all honor, we give you all glory. Yes, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, In Jesus amen. Name. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Well, I just wanna say, Thank everybody for being here today. I want to thank everybody for uh, popping on to, uh, on on live or Facebook Facebook live today. We really appreciate you. Praise God. All those that later will be watching this on YouTube. We want to thank you as well for being faithful, coming every single week to get the word of God to be elevated to the next level. Praise God. But I'm just truly excited today. I know the enemy tried to rattle me a little earlier because I went to go pick up some chicken and it wasn't ready. <laughs> And they didn't have no reason why it wasn't ready, but I said, you know what, enemy, you are a lie. You're not gonna rattle my cage behind some chicken. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So I had, I had Brother David there was with me to, to, to be by my side when it was all going down and to help pray me down, praise God. <laughs> hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, when you got other men and women that got around you, when the enemy tried to attack you, it's good to have your soldiers to help you calm down, amen? Hallelujah. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm truly excited today. I mean, we have been anticipating this moment for weeks. Um, the, ever since she accepted the opportunity to come on here and share the word of God with us. I mean, this mighty woman of God has spoken into this ministry. She spoke into this ministry before we even got started, six months prior, saying what God was going to be doing through my wife and I with ministry. And then six months later, here we come, chosen a few outreach ministries, coming alive, praise God, through a prophetic word that came through this woman of God. But I'm telling you, she's a powerful anointed teacher. She's a powerful anointed preacher. And she is an awesome, awesome anointed vocalist for the Lord and for the kingdom, praise God. But I don't want to take up any more of this time because I know she's coming. I know she's filled up with the Holy Spirit. I know she's praying up and she's fasted up, ready to deliver a message in the name of Jesus. So at this time, come on up, Reverend Carol Dickey, and let the Holy Spirit use you as we know all over Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's so good to be here. What a great welcome. You should go with me everywhere. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a little bunch of you all to come with me. Amen. Praise God. So I'm trying to think. Are we having a prayer time afterward? Yeah. Or not? Yeah, we're going to save, save the song for at the end. Is that That's okay? Right. You can okay. Do that 
That's what I, I feel like we're going to do. Okay, so praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you like to travel? I really like to travel. Amen, amen. Amen? I like to travel. I just got a prophetic word I'm going to Ireland amen. to preach. Amen. amen. And some of you don't know this, but my 23rd great great grandmother was the Queen of Ireland. Mm. Right. And came over and married the King of Scotland, and she brought Christianity to Scotland. Mm. Praise God. And we, right. we were in Scotland about five years ago, and her name was Queen Margaret, and I was in her chapel. Nice. And I sat there, and so when I got that word, I said, Lord, look at how you work. Look at how you work. You can go down, I don't know how many generations, and... Uh, have one woman bring the gospel and another woman come up from behind. I'm excited what Amen. God is doing. Amen. But you got to watch who you take on your journey. Come on. Come Amen. On. Praise God. I don't know about you, but if you've ever traveled the missions trips or whatever with somebody who wasn't on the same page, let's Amen. just put it that way, it can ruin the whole ministry. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 You gotta watch. Amen. And I've been thinking about this for a while because I've I've been in the ministry for 40 years. I know I look so young, but it, you know, <laughs> but just take a word for it. And I've had lots of acquaintances who I would have called friends. Amen. But in the end, that's not what they turned out to be. Come on. Amen. Amen. They were in it for what I could do for them, where I could take them. Amen. Or whatever, whatever need I met in them at that time was the reason they were with me. Mm. You have to be careful who you allow on your journey because it will affect your route and your destination. Amen. Mm. Praise God. It can take you off your destination. How many of you have seen somebody get involved with the wrong person and they deterred them and then that was the end? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got to be careful. But I, and, and I'm not really talking about unbelievers right now. And I'm not talking about unequally yoked. Right. I'm talking about, because that could be a sermon for another time, amen. amen. I'm talking about fellow believers. Right. Amen. When I was first saved, uh, I had a good friend. He said, Carol, not everybody in church is saved. Mm. I said, well, how? <laughs> I said, that's impossible. He said, oh, Carol, no, it's not. I was so naive. Some are not who they appear to be. And I'm, I'm a compassionate person because the Lord has brought me through so much. And I believe the best around about everyone. I really, really do. So it takes me a long time to get it. My son says, thank God for the Holy Spirit, Mom, because you have no discernment at all. <laughs> because it's like, sure, you, come on, I love you, you know? And uh, I would be completely lost without the Holy Spirit. And thank God I wasn't Noah, because the minute the people started screaming outside the ark, I would have opened the door and let them all in. <laughs> And then what would have happened? We all would have sunk. Amen. <laughs> and nobody would have been saved. So that's me, okay? That's why I wasn't back there. Um, nobody would have been saved. So sometimes believing the best about people and hoping for the best about them can lead us astray. Amen. And it's like, well, what are you talking about? The Lord says to love. Yes, the Lord does say to love everybody. He doesn't say trust everybody. Amen. 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 That is not what Jesus said. Amen. And so we have to uh, be careful. And this is a, a message the Lord has given me, and I know it's going to hit its mark. Amen. So that's all I can say. The Bible says we will know them by their fruit. Yes. Okay? So the word will say, well, you're judging. No, I'm not judging anything. Because I'm not judging you personally. I'm judging your fruit. Amen. I'm just a fruit inspector. Amen. Okay? Amen. If there's worms in your apples, I'm going to call out those worms. Amen. Amen. I'm not judging you. I'm judging what I see you produce. Amen. If it's not right, Amen. that's a heads up. That's right. So it's not all about fuzzy feelings and whether we love somebody or like them. It's, it's about knowing exactly who they are. And sometimes believers get worked up because you got accolades or somebody's yeah. nice to you or so on and so forth. And uh, they turn out to be just figments of your imagination because when you really get to know them, they're not what you thought they were. Amen. Amen? Amen. And some of my friends have been like that as some leaders. And that's where the hurt really comes in, when your leaders are not who they claim to be. That's why I don't ever elevate 
anybody, even a leader. Amen. Because they're just people. Amen. That's right. But it's nothing new. So I want to start with 2 Timothy 3.8. 2 Timothy 3.8 says, These teachers oppose the truth, just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith. Okay, there's a couple things I want to show you. First of all, he's talking about teachers. Mm -hmm. He says they have a depraved mind and a counterfeit faith, mm -hmm. yet they're teaching. Yeah. But the part was really interesting was they oppose the truth just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses. So I'm like, okay, well, who's Janus and Jambres? So look them up, Exodus 7.10. Exodus 7.10. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. How many of you remember the movie? Ten Commandments? Okay, John Heston throws the thing and becomes a snake, okay? But Pharaoh called his own wise men and sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. Counterfeit. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up the other staffs. And Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hard, and he still refused to listen, just as the Lord had predicted. And their names were Janus and Jambres. Mm. So this is a part, it's so interesting to me, because I never heard this before. Janus and Jambres were the Pharaoh's magicians who had a counterfeit work mm. like Moses. Mm. Counterfeit work, and here in 2 Timothy it says these teachers oppose the truth just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses. Mm. Come on, that's a counterfeit truth. Looks good, but it doesn't have the power. Mm. It's counterfeit. Okay. So I go back and I start looking some more because you don't I don't hear about them in Sunday school, right? Janus and Jambres. <laughs> so tradition holds that they were with Moses, or they withstood Moses, let's put it that way, 40 years previously at the court of Pharaoh, and that they interpreted a dream of a king that foretold the birth of Moses, and that they're the reason that the king made the edict to kill all the children in the land. History tells us, or tradition tells us, they're the same people. So they tried to kill Moses first, before he was anything, and he couldn't. Then they oppose him in the courts of Pharaoh, and here we're gonna see, in a few minutes, they oppose Moses on the way to the promised land. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that were responsible for the death of all the newborn male children. Then they were said to have later been proselytes of Moses and left Egypt at the Exodus with the mixed multitudes. Now, you, you gotta realize there are at least a million men and women leaving uh, Israel, I mean, uh, Egypt, on the way to the Promised Land. That's just a, a million men. You got women, children, you got a couple million people. I don't know if these people snuck in. I don't know if they, you know, found the writing on the wall, as we say, and said, okay, we better get out of here. Because they were in Moses' court, and they were not able to withstand Moses. I'm sorry, they were in Pharaoh's court. They were not able to withstand Moses. And now Moses and all the children of Israelite are leaving, and they're probably thinking, we need to get out of here before Pharaoh blames us for this. So they go on the route with the Israelites. They go on the route, and they are the ones that are reported to have instigated Aaron to make the golden calf. So they're causing trouble all around. They caused trouble before Moses. They caused trouble during Moses. Now they're leaving Egypt. And now they're causing trouble on the way. They're causing trouble. And then tradition reflects that they may have been put to death after making the golden calf. So in the midst of all that God is doing was doing with the Israelites through Moses, the Exodus, the crossing through the Red Sea, Pharaoh's armies drowning in the Red Sea, being fed in the wilderness by manna, everything that these people have seen, these people, these men, still conspired against Moses. They were still saying, okay, you know what, you got some power like that 
scat. If you're down, we can throw down a scat too. They forgot theirs was swallowed up by the power of the Lord. Amen. The crux of the matter is these men were counterfeits. And even on the journey, they were counterfeits. Mm. Come home now. Okay? They were counterfeits. Now, maybe Moses said, oh, maybe they've changed. They might have seen something. They were counterfeits by the enemy planted in the midst of it to cause trouble for them along the way. Come on. You're always going to encounter people along your way who are not pure of heart or motive. I hate to tell you, if you haven't seen it yet, you will. They may have some level of success in the world, but that's not what God's looking for. God is looking for people pure of heart. They may appear powerful, but it's not from the Lord. Just like these counterfeit magicians, their staff, I don't know how they become snakes. I, I have no idea. But there's a counterfeit power. There's a counterfeit anointing. Mm. There's a counterfeit mm. that if you don't know how to discern, you can recognize as, oh, well, that was pretty good. I can't do that. They Come must on. be from the Lord. Come on. Hello, the devil is an imitator. He hasn't done one original thing ever. Amen. And he can make things look real. Amen. I've had counterfeits along my way. People I trusted, people I loved. People who I didn't realize were jealous of things that God was doing with me on my journey. Because if you ask me, who would be jealous of me? I don't even want to be me. Why would somebody else want to be me? You know what I'm saying? People don't see what goes on in, you know, I guess someone says, oh, okay. She's coordinated. She's, she's kind of funny. Looks, you know, she drives a nice car. She must have got it all together. <sighs> Jesus, uh -huh. you don't know what I've been through, okay? Amen. You just don't know. So people see things, and they make judgments. Right. And then they operate on the judgments that they made, mm -hmm. rightly or not. And I've had people that I really trusted, that I loved, that I, I, I wanted to emulate, that I wanted to be like. And they turned out not so great. And I remember uh, when I first started Bible school, I'm not even kidding. I, the Lord healed me, healed me. He healed my leg. I was crippled as a child. He healed it. And my first year of Bible school, he healed me of cancer. Amen. Amen. That's how my whole ministry started. Because then I just started testifying, and then people started getting healed. So I'm still in Bible school, and God's doing these miraculous things, but I really know nothing. I mean, I went straight from nothing to Bible school. There's just no in between. And I guess sometimes, and this is just a word to somebody, Sometimes people will always see you how you used to be. Mm. Okay? Amen. I've been saved over 40 years. I've been in the ministry 40 years. And some people see me as that same pathetic little 19-year-old girl who God needed to come and rescue. Now, I'm not saying God doesn't rescue me. He rescues me daily. Amen. Okay? Amen. That's how, that, he rescues all of us. Okay? It's not just Amen. me. Amen. I walked with him intimately Amen. for 40 years. Amen. And they still can't see me as I am today. Amen. Somebody here needs to hear that because they're going to look at you and think, oh, you're just still that nobody. And that happened to me one time. I was singing at a big, a big banquet. A lot of people were there. And I'd only been, you know, maybe, maybe saved and stuff for like five years. And, um, some big wigs came and said to me, wow, you're, you're really good. And I, I said, oh, well, you know, thanks. And this person who I loved, who I hung around with, who I was in Elisha to their Elijah, I would have washed their feet. I think I might have. I did everything. Broke through the crowd and said, oh, I remember you when you were nothing. Mm. I remember you when you used to call me in the middle of the night asking for prayer and crying <laughs> and then laughed at me in the midst of people seeing the hand of God on me what do you say if it had been somebody off the street it wouldn't have bothered me you know that's true you could get cussed down parking lines I, my kids laugh because I'm bless you Jesus loves you I might even roll my window down and start speaking in tongues because that's just who I am 
But you get somebody that means something to you, that you love, that you respect, and they're going to disrespect you in the midst of people, it broke my heart. And there were three or four more times that I won't even get into where they did the same thing. Big times, big times, where I would sit there and say, you've got to be kidding me. And every time they did it, because I've known the person uh, over 40 years. So we, I won't even go in because they may be watching. Uh, every five or six years, something would happen and it would dredge it all up again. And then you feel like that same stupid kid and then you gotta fight it down because that's just how the enemy wants you to know it. Let me tell you, the enemy will use the ones closest to you Amen. because strangers don't matter. Chicken people don't matter, right? <laughs> you may want that chicken, but the chicken people don't matter. You can cuss me out. I used to be a bill collector before I went into the, the ministry. And they go, oh, give the difficult ones to Carol because she never gets angry. She, I just, they could cut. I said, okay, all right. You mean, it means nothing to me. I don't know you. You don't know me. I just feel you're not saved and I just move on about my business. But you got somebody that's walking on my journey with me, who's seen what God's done with me, who was in the hospital when they, the doctor said it's a miracle, there's no cancer. Amen. You were there every single time and you're still going to say that? You got to watch out for those people. Amen. Snakes in the grass. So in number 16, we see those who conspired against Moses. Now, they were not the only ones. If you're in any kind of leadership or any kind of ministry, somebody's going to conspire against you. you I've never been to a church where somebody, oh, you know, pastor could have done that better. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm very opinionated. That may be true. But if you can't support that leader, you need to get out of that ministry. You don't sit there and triangulate. You don't sit there and cause problems. You don't sit there and say, well, he could have done that. You know what? You need to go Amen. and start your own ministry. Amen. See how well you do with that. Amen. Because that is from the enemy. That's right. You got anything to say to somebody, you go to their face. If it's a sin problem, you say, okay, I got a problem. Okay, that's different. If you're just going to talk about how somebody does something, that's from the enemy. Amen. I'm Amen. sorry. Amen. You might even be right. I'm not even saying that. I tell my husband this all the time. I said, it's not what you said. It's the way you said it. Men don't seem to get it. You know what I'm talking about? Well, your, husband, your husband's perfect. My husband has a tone of voice. He gets that tone, and I just, I just check out. I just, the minute, it's like, I'm gone. Jesus, where are you? I, I do not respond to that frequency. And he may be completely right. It's just the way you do it. Okay? So number 61, one day Korah, son of Izar, a descendant of Kohath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab and On, so and so forth, and the tribe of Reuben. They incited rebellion against Moses, and along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. You gotta watch out for the prominent members of the assembly. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's all I'm saying. I remember when, I gotta throw this in. One time, my husband and I were interim pastors because uh, the pastor, it was uh, long ago, the pastor retired and they were looking for new pastors. So my husband and I were interim pastors and uh, we preached every sermon. He did. So one Wednesday night he got sick. So I don't know any better. I feel God called me. So I showed up and preached for him. Amen. I had some prominent people. That was good, Carol. I think they were just surprised that, you know, I knew anything. Okay? Next thing I know, they come to my husband because they've had a meeting about me. And uh, they've decided they don't need any more Wednesday night services. <laughs> they didn't even say, why can't I preach? They said, what can't I all Wednesday night services till we find a pastor? And I said, well, Carol, you shut the whole church down just because you got up to preach. Prominent members. Prominent members. That's all I'm saying. Amen. So when Moses in verse 4 heard what they were saying, he fell face down on the ground and he told them, Tomorrow morning the Lord will show us who belongs to him and who's holy. Amen. We're going to have a showdown. I love these showdowns. Mm -hmm. I just do. I really do. I don't like it when I'm in a showdown. 
You know, because we, we are in daily showdowns. I mean, Elijah's not the only one that's against the powers of Baal on mountaintops. Amen. I'm in one all the time, it seems. I don't look forward to them because I'm not really a confrontational person. I'd rather just float around and tell everybody Jesus loves them and call it a day. But that's not what God says about us as Christians. Amen. We're in a battle. You're in a battle. You're going to have some battles. That's all there is to it. So he tells them tomorrow, burn some incense before the Lord, and we'll see who God chooses as his holy ones, because you Levites have gone too far. Amen. The Levites, the ones set apart, set apart for the service of God, had gone too far, because they were questioning the leadership, who God chose, because they didn't like his style, and what all he was doing was reflecting what God had told him. Moses was obedient. Only one time did he not do it. That's when he struck the rock, when God told him to talk to the rock. One time out of those whole 40 years dealing with those messed up people, and he didn't get to see the promised land because of that one time. And that's because he was so doggone cold. Oh, there was so doggone obedient that God knew he knew better. One time. And they're going to come against him. You've gone too far. So he said, now listen, Levites, do what you want. Do what you want. And stand before the Lord. And he says to Korah, he said, he already given you a special ministry to you and your Levites, but it wasn't enough for you. And now you're demanding the priesthood too. Let me start right there. There are people along the way who have their own ministry. They've been called to something great. They've been called to something that God fashioned just for them. And they don't want it. They want what you got. They want what you got. Because they're jealous. Because what? You're more upfront. You're more seen. You're more well respected. These Levites had their own ministry, but they were not satisfied with it and wanted Moses' ministry instead. They were willing to go to the top of the mountain and fast. That man fasted so much, I can't even believe he ever lived. <laughs> I think one time he went up there and didn't have water or food for 40 days, came back down, saw everything, went right back up, did it again. Hello. That's why so much as Jesus did, he's the son of God. He's always praying for these people, saying, God, please have mercy on them. He said, no, I'm sick of these people. I'm going to make a nation out of you. And what is Moses saying? No, 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 please. Please don't do that. He is standing up for these people. And yet they are not happy with their ministry, and they want his. Mm. Henry, somebody's going to want your ministry. Somebody's not going to care that you paid for it. Blood, sweat, tears. All the years you planned, they're going to say, oh, it's easy because you prepared it and it's nice with a big old bow on it. And they're going to say, I'm going to take it now. It's ripe. No, it's not. That's yours. And you keep it. Amen. You keep it, Henry. Amen. They're going to sign the left to you and they're going to look like, oh, you know, I, we have this ministry and we have that ministry. And the Levites had their own ministry. They didn't want it. You're going to say, oh, yeah, you know, they're, they're doing this. Great. Then let them do their own thing on their own time. Let them replicate even what you're doing somewhere else. To God be the glory. Amen. Okay? Amen. To God be the glory. The but I'll tell you one thing. You're going to have to kill me, step over my dead body to get something that the Lord has told me to do. Amen. Amen. You want to get it? You got to cry for my dead cold hands. Hallelujah. Amen. My mother used to say this about this ring. This is my mother's ring. And she had it since I was a kid. I said, Mom, can I please have that ring? She didn't even wear it anymore because she was 93 by the time she died. She, her finger was all small and it was hidden. So I said, my please can have it. She and I have to pry it up, hold it. <laughs> I'm getting married with that ring. I said, oh, no, you're not. I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm the executor. Okay? I'll wear this ring every day proudly. Yeah, see, my mother left it to me. You're going to have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands because that's my ministry. Yeah. Because I'm not I work for it because Jesus has entrusted it to me. I'm not letting my Savior down. Yes. Henry, they're going to want what you have. They're going to want what you have. They're going to want your humility. They're going to want your anointing. They're going to want all that, but they can't have it. Amen. Guess 
what? Because it's not theirs. Hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, so now the Lord is the one that you and your followers are revolting against. Not me. This is the Lord. And who's Aaron that you're complaining about him anyway? Aaron doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aaron, I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know he's a Levite. I know, but I mean, <laughs> Moses goes up and he says, I can't even talk. Send Aaron. He goes, no, I want you. So he picked a stutterer over Aaron to begin with. Okay. Amen. Aaron knows the law. He knows everything. He it. But Aaron, you know, God bless him. But he's the weak one. Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments and, and Aaron's down there and the people are pressuring him. So they threw all the stuff, all of the spoils from Egypt. Remember, Egypt, now we sent them out. They said, take all of our gold. Take all the gold. Take it all. We want you out of here. Amen. Right? And you're probably thinking, whoa, where did they get all that gold in the wilderness for? I'll tell you what. They were just caretakers till they got to the promised land and then they were to use that yes. gold for the Amen. temple. Amen. Everything's gone. Well, what does he do? Moses goes, we don't, where's this fellow Moses? This fellow. <laughs> this fellow. Can you imagine? <laughs> Pharaoh's armies are destroyed. There's plagues. There's everything. Look, I'm just going to tell you. I, I live in Temecula, and I love my house, but there are flies out in my backyard, especially when it's 100 degrees. And I'm out there, and I'm... I'm calling the angels of God to come and spare me from these flies. <laughs> it's like, seriously, I have a new puppy, so he's got to be outside because he's going to tear something up. So I'm sitting out there at 100 degrees, and the flies are attacking me. I'm, Jesus, send your angels. I, I don't know how they live with these plagues. I can't even handle Temecula. And they've got plagues of all kinds, frogs, boils, flies, is it? I mean, hello. They've seen it all. Darkness. The first Lord came. And then he said, well, who's this fellow? Fellow Moses. And Aaron gets scared and says, okay, just give me all the gold. Give me all the gold that was reserved for Jesus, was reserved for the Lord and the temple. Give me all the gold. And then he makes a golden calf, which disgusts me. And Moses comes down and says, what have you done? And you, and you know what Aaron does everything? I just threw the gold in there, and a calf jumped out. <laughs> my kids couldn't think of something better. That's worse than the dog ate my homework. I mean, I just threw the spoils of Egypt in the fire and a calf jumped out. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And so that's why Christ me up when he says, and Aaron, what are you complaining about him for? I just think that's hysterical. I have a weird sense of humor. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so we see here, they're not content. They want more and they're conspiring against Moses and they want the presence of God without contending for it. That's what it's all about. If you see someone with anointing, it's because it's a presence. Yes. It's the presence because you know what? They've spent time in his presence. Yes. Yes. They've spent time. Yes. They've denied themselves. They've submitted. Hallelujah. They've been obedient. Yes. Amen. And that's what you want? That's what you think can just happen like that? Your attitude alone prevents you from getting it. Come on. Yeah. Speak, speak, speak. Ooh, that was... That, that gave me chills. Your attitude alone prevents you because you don't have the right spirit. You can't be humble enough to request anything from the Lord with that kind of spirit. You better go back to square one. Somebody's ministry did to go back to square one. You know what God has done? He, the, 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 what the world has done, they have seen somebody with a natural gifting that God has given. And what does it say? The Bible says the gifts and calling to God without repentance. So you got a natural gifting. Some of these silver tongued devils will get up in a, in a uh, pulpit, and they're going to preach some stuff, and everybody's going to come. They're going to have ten thousand people. They're going to be on TV. They're going to do all that, but they haven't walked through the fire. Amen. They haven't learned that they're, they're this deep. Mm, do you know what I'm saying? They haven't learned anything, and that's how I feel. They say, "Oh, okay, I want what you got. You <sighs> took me forty years to get it. Right. Amen. I don't have another forty years. I mean." I, Yes, my grandmother lived to 101. I guess I have four years. <laughs> but I'll probably be in a home somewhere <laughs> trying to lead somebody else to Jesus. <laughs> I don't know, you know, Jesus. I could just. <sighs> you know, I just don't get it. They want the easy route. Yeah. And I understand that. That's what, it's, it's human nature. You know, you got kids in high school. They don't want to read the book. Let's see the movie. Right. Well, yeah, Cliff Notes. But I'm too lazy to read Cliff Notes. 
I'm from Hollywood. I, a movie will answer all my problems back in the day. You just watch the movie. Ten Commandments. I didn't read the Bible until I was in Bible school. I got everything to Ten Commandments. And I, talk, I watched that movie so much, and I saw my son today, because he lives with Maria. And he used to be, I was a children's pastor, and he would say to me when we were preaching about this, um, and the death angel, he goes, Mom, is that when the green mist came? Because in the movie, it's a green mist. I said, honey, I don't know if the death angel is a green mist, but that's, is that the green mist? And I said, I don't know. That's how many times we've seen that movie. He thought for the first 20 years of his life it was actual green mist. I, that's that. I'm a terrible mother. But anyway, so Moses summoned Nathan and Abram and told them to come, and they said, we refuse to come to you. Oh, oh, now. Oh, I have a puppy. I hate that dog. It's, it's, I mean, I love the dog, but I, it's a very stubborn puppy. It's five months old and already is 40 pounds. And it doesn't listen to one dog I've been. And I'll say, Hudson, because everything in my house is Hollywood. My dog is Monroe for Marilyn Monroe, and he's Hudson for Rock Hudson. And we said, Hudson, come here. And he just looks at you. Said, Hudson, Hudson. And then he's trying to chew up everything. And one time I went to, uh, not hit him hard, but just swat his, his behind. And I hurt my hand because he's so substantial. And I feel like, I feel like I can totally see them come here. And they're like, no. I mean, as a parent, you know that makes you want to go ballistic, right? It's like you weren't in trouble till you told me no. Now. You're really in trouble. You're never coming out of your room the rest of your life. That's it. I'll arrange your marriage, and then you're out. <laughs> so he said, no, when I'm coming. I, I, I just, I can't believe. I just, I can't believe it. So they all stood there, and he said, get away from them. Moses said, get away from those people. But they had some people that wanted to follow him because they thought they sounded better than Moses, who was always on his face, and Aaron right. couldn't talk. They still looked young people, and Moses still fell on his face and said, please don't be angry with all these people for that one man's sin. Mm. And he said, tell him to get away from them. So he rushed over to the tent and said, get, wait, get out of here. Get away from the tents of these wicked men. Don't touch anything that belongs to them. Well, that's another thing. Don't touch anything that belongs to them. Let me tell you a secret before I go on. So before I was Christian, um, I trained to go on Broadway. That was my whole life, my whole life. And so then the Lord called me into ministry. Okay, so I left Hollywood, went into ministry. But I still had people wanting to give me record contracts, stuff like that. And the Lord would always say, tell them no, Carol. And I said, but, but God, but God, I got nothing. I got nothing going on. I live in a little town. Little town. I got nothing. It's my dream. And he'd say, and I said, I don't have to pay for anything. They're going to pay for everything. And God said, tell them no. He said, because I want you to be who I want you to be. Amen. And they're going to want you to be who they want you to be. All right. I turned down three. Three. It got easier each time I said, no, and my husband said, are you sure you're here in the Lord, right, Carol? Because it could have meant money, right? It could have, and not that I'm money hungry, but you know, you got to eat, obviously. Right. I got to eat something, right? So they've got something, but he said, quit, don't touch anything that belongs to them. Sometimes, Henry, they're going to offer you something. And I'm going to tell you from words, well, don't touch anything that belongs to them. And if you do, they'll, you will be destroyed also for their sins. Mm. So all the people stood there, and it's so sad, they always take their wives and children. What do those innocent people have to do with anything with those big mouth men? I would have said, Daddy, the nice to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here. I'm on God's side. Give me a godly man. That's what I would have said. But no, they're standing there. So sad. So sad. And Moses said, this is how you know that the Lord has sent me to do these things that I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death and nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something big and opens its, uh, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up and all their belongings and they go down alive into the grave, you'll know these men have shown their contempt for the Lord. And you know what? It's not contempt for me, even though they were against Moses. Contempt for the Lord because he was who God sent. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
So we gotta remember this, because sometimes I let people walk all over me. Sometimes I'm a doormat. Ask my son Christopher. He reminds me of that every single day. Mommy, let everybody take me out of you. Because I always think it's just me. And it doesn't matter. I don't care. I just move on, right? Like you said earlier, it doesn't matter. Sometimes the Lord says, Carol, it's not about me. I mean, about you, it's about me. Amen. When they disrespect you, when they do that, they're really doing me. And then I have to say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm going to take it seriously. Because they were not disrespecting Moses. They were disrespecting and dishonoring God. Amen. 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 So what happened? <sighs> He'd hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. And the earth swallowed them up and swallowed the men with their households and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. Mm. And they went down alive into the grave along with all their belongings. So the earth closed over them and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. And all the people around them fled when they heard their screams, saying, the earth's gonna swallow us too. And the fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the 250 men who were on that side offering incense. Because they were offering the wrong kind of incense. Okay? They're trying to prove something. If you go back, you'll see a couple of Eli's sons said they offered the wrong fire in the temple. I got a whole sermon on that. People are offering fire all the time. It's the wrong fire. It's not a holy fire. Come on now. I don't want to mess with God's anointed. And there are always going to be those who rise up against you. Because many times they want their ministry, your life, your spouse. You know how many churches I've seen where somebody steals the pastor, the pastor's wife or something? Because their spouse has worked them through all their problems. And now they look really good. And now somebody else wants them. That's what happens. Come on. And they say, oh, I can have that church. I can have this. I you know, what was I thinking? That happens all the time. Amen. There are always going to be those who rise up against you because they want your ministry, your life, or something that they haven't paid for. Okay? That's a spirit of entitlement. And I see it all over this land. Yes. Everybody wants something for free yes. that they haven't paid for, that they haven't earned. I'm sorry. It's everywhere, okay? Everywhere. And that's what they have. It's like, okay, why, why should you have that? And I should, no, I, I want like that too. You didn't earn it. Amen. Amen. They want what God has given you. Amen. But it's not their calling, and the mantle would be too heavy for them. Hang on. Let me give you a little thing about mantles. Mantles like a it's a spiritual thing, but it's actually a, a physical, there's a physical counterpart to it, like a little cape kind of thing that they would throw over somebody, symbolizing the anointing on you. And uh, you know, when Elijah went up, he said, you, is there anything I can do for you, Elijah, before I go exam? I want no mantle. And he said, well, that's a hard thing. You better talk to the Lord about that. Even Elijah could give his old mantle away. Can you do that? <laughs> Even Elijah could not give his old mantle away. It's not his to give. Right. Come on. I mean, it's not his to give. Right. So you can hang out with the godless person. Believe me, I have sung for some big people. And one of them, oh, she, she meant so much to me. She started the whole ministry in the Philippines. And she's raised people from the dead. And I remember I was at her funeral. And I said, Lord, I want to, I want, I don't even want double portion. Because I don't care. I just give me a small how much mantle does she got? You know, spread it around. Because I just want a little tiny taste of what that woman knew for the Lord. Those mantles are heavy. They're heavy. It takes a long time to get them, to keep them. Amen. And I don't think sometimes, I don't think our little bodies can handle it. I think that's why some people who are really anointed, like the Captain Pullman and whatever, they die young. Because I don't think our frail bodies can handle it. That's what I think. I mean, that's not in the word. But I've seen it. I've seen it. Under a heavy day of anointing, you go home, you know what I'm talking about. You're exhausted. Mm -hmm. You may have to sleep 14 hours. I was like, what happened? I just prayed for a couple people. I'll tell you why, because you were under the power of the Lord. You, we're not meant to be like that until we're in heaven. Yes. 
where you can withstand it. Amen. And let me just tell you one other thing, because I love this story. When Elisha finally died, it said he died, he was buried in a cave when he died from the illness that he died of. And I thought, oh, Elisha had an illness, really? Because he was, he did. He asked for dough anointing, and if you go to his Bible, he did twice the, well, there's twice the recorded ministries than Elijah. Big ministries, okay? Big, big things, big miracles. But he died of an illness. I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. So another prophet's walking by, and he dies, and they said, well, let's just throw him in the cave with Elisha. It's already, you know, do it yourself, burial. Just throw him in there. They threw his body on the bones of Elisha, and he was still so anointed, the guy got up and ran out. <laughs> his bones brought that man back to life. That's anointing, okay? That's all I'm going to say. When I burn forest slaughter somewhere, don't walk over my grave because you just might get something. I'm serious. That's something, okay? That's an anointing. You don't get that anointing by doing nothing. You get it by leaving your plow. Remember, Elisha came back and said, hey, you want to come? He said, well, let me say goodbye to him. He said, do what you want. He said, oh, wait a minute. He cut up his plow. You know why he cut it up and burned it? So he couldn't go back to it. Come on, come on. Some of us just, well, let me just hide the plow in the shed. It's, it's my plan B in case the ministry doesn't work out. I'll come back. No, he cut it up, made it an offering to the Lord and kept on moving. That's where the anointing comes from. That's where the madness comes from. And people are going to want you anointed by doing nothing. Nothing. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. And sometimes we make poor decisions. And then we got to pay the price because the partnership sounded good. In 2 Chronicles 20, 35, some time later it says, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance with King Azahiah of Israel, who was very wicked. And together they built a fleet of trading ships at the port of Sozo. Blah, blah. Then Eliza, I mean Eliezer from Mereshah prophesied against Jehoshaphat and said, Because you have allied yourself with King Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy your work. So, so the ships met with disaster and were never put out to sea. Now Jehoshaphat was a good king, but he aligned himself with the wrong people. First he aligned himself with King Ahaziah and later with King Ahab. Now everyone has to deal with people who want to come along for the ride. For their best interests. And even the early church had to deal with that. Acts 20, 30. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. 2 Timothy 4, 10. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. And Jesus had to deal with it all the time. The priests are always after him. Judas doesn't understand what's going on. They wanted to kill some of the, um, to kill Jesus just because Lazarus had been raised from the dead. Because they said they're going to follow him. <laughs> That's why they were mad. That man came back to life. They didn't care. They just didn't want people following Jesus. It says in uh, John 12, 10, Then the leading priests decided to kill Jesus. And, and Lazarus too. They wanted to eliminate the whole problem. Amen. Eliminate the evidence. Amen. The priests didn't want the truth. They wanted the following. Do you think it's any different now? No, it isn't. They want the following. So we all have to contend with this. Jesus had to deal with it. We got to deal with it. Amen. So why am I telling you this? I'm saying watch whose advice you follow. Right. Amen. If you don't know their real life or their fruit, don't let them infiltrate Amen. your life or your ministry or your journey. And don't you join theirs, because Amen. you will not prosper. Amen. Okay, I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to finish with this song. And this song, I've said it before, but the Lord it, it matches the sermon. And as I sing, I want you to think about it, because I think the Lord is, is talking to some people. The Lord is, is warning you, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I've only preached this sermon one other time, and you know I preached it, and then that following week, the assistant pastor came against the pastor. Mm -hmm. Almost caused a church split. Mm -hmm. For nothing. For nothing. I've been going to that church for seven years. Seven years I've known these people. 
Don't, don't think the enemy cannot come and deceive you or deceive others. So, David, are you there? Oh, there he is. Let's go ahead. And as I say this, I want you to think about what I said, okay? Because the Lord's going to talk to you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your instruction, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, there's no one like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm a little technical, but that's all right. So the Lord knows. Lord, I praise you. I pray you bring things to people's yes, minds right now. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, you, praise right you reveal, reveal, Lord God, supernaturally reveal yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. those who are from you and those yes, who are not. Put a hedge of protection about your people, Lord. Yes, Lord we claim all the promises in Psalm 91. Yes, Put a hedge, yes, hedge of protection, oh God. We ask it in Jesus' name, oh God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We okay? Okay. Don't worry about it. That's all right. Lord knows. All right. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Henry. Hallelujah, Lord. God, I'm praying right now for Pastor Henry in particular, because you showed me him, Lord. Oh, Lord, protect him, this man of God. I think I told him once before. Don't, don't yoke up with someone unless you know. And Lord, you would say that to him again. Don't yoke up with someone unless I have told you. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care anything. Because this ministry is important. It's viable, which means it can live on its own. Okay? It can live on its own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It can breathe on its own. That's what you say about a baby. It's viable. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for all that you're doing in this place, Lord God. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Powerful message. You know, I've said it before. When the Lord wants to get that message out, he's going to get it out. Amen. You're going to hear what he wants you to hear. Yes, and it's important we should all heed that word. If it's a reproof, a correction, yes, Lord Jesus. just take it, take it to that, 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 that hidden spot where yes. it's just you and the Lord yes, and talk Lord. to him. Show me, Lord, what it is that you need me to understand or know. Yes. Powerful. Thank you, Hallelujah. Sister Carol Dickey. Amen. Just amazing. With that, you, I'm just going to call our very own Pastor Henry Father Jr. Amen. to uh, close the out in prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We, we're not going to even let the enemy have any ground. Right. Praise God. That's right. You know what? Because the word of God was spoken today. Amen. And it was spoken powerfully, praise God. And I'm telling you, and I received that word. Amen. I received it. Because God had already been prepping me to receive it. <laughs> you know, God has already been prepping yeah, me to receive that. So when it came, it wasn't like it wasn't already known. Because God had already been speaking to me. Yep. It was just confirmation, praise Amen. God. Of a lot of things that God was trying yeah. to get me to understand. That I need to be watchful as well as prayerful in those who come in alignment with this ministry. Amen. And I got to be very watchful. And I've been in, I've been in that mode. I've been in that mode before God even gave that to you. And God has been taking me and fasting and praying about it and helping to see things. And I thank you for that word for that confirmation. Praise oh, God. The enemy want to try to mess with technical difficulty because the woman of God was supposed to call us out with a son, but that's okay because <laughs> the word was so powerful that we don't even need a son. Praise God. I know that each and every one of you that received this word today, I know that your lives were elevated. And it spoke to each and every one of you. I know it's somebody that was dealing with this situation that God was speaking to you today.
today. I know he dealt with me and I received it and I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for each and every person that showed up today. Because you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here to get the word of God. All of you online that was watching, you could have been doing anything else, but you chose to sit down for the time that you did to receive the word of God. And I just thank you for that. I'm telling you, God is truly on the move in this ministry. Yes. I want to thank this woman of God. She came all the way down here from Temecula <laughs> to be used by God to share the word of God. Amen. And I just want to thank you, Reverend Carol Dick. I want to thank you for your heart. I want to thank you for your spirit. I want to thank you for your compassion. Amen. I thank you for being obedient at all times. You don't listen to what man say. I know that about you. Amen. You don't listen to what man say. You listen to what the Holy Spirit say yes. all the time. And I appreciate that from you. Amen. Because I know you are a true fighter for Christ. I know you are a true woman of God. And I, and I, respect, and I respect you greatly. Amen. I respect the word that comes out of you greatly. And God has been using you for so long. And you have so much to give into the kingdom. Amen. And you're not done yet. Right. You're not done yet. Right. God going to give you those 40 years. Yeah. Because there's a lot of mountains you need to climb over and tear down some things. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep it all going. I can, you know, y'all know how I am. Y'all know I can keep going. But we're not going to do that, praise God. I'm going to pray us out. And we're going to get some good food. The chicken that I went and waited for. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. I waited for that chicken. We're going to eat that chicken. Praise God. Amen. But Father God, we just come before you right now giving you thanks, honor, glory, and praise first and foremost. Thanking you for another opportunity, Father God, to come before your presence in praise. Thanking you for the word of God that was brought today by this strong woman of God. We just thank you today, Lord. We pray that the words that were spoken today, that it may touch the hearts of men and that it falls on fertile ground in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now, those among us that are sick, that you bring about healing in their bodies, Lord. Those that are burdened in their lives, that you lift their burdens, Father God. We pray that those that are going into confusion in their mind, that you stabilize their thoughts in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask you right now that every household that is dealing with financial burdens right now, we ask that you bring about a, a blessing upon them, Father God, that they don't worry, Father God, about their financial situation, but they put their hands in your hands and trust in you to carry them over those strongholds, Lord. We ask you right now, Father God, that every individual that is in this ministry, that you strengthen them, Father God, that, Father God, that they be bold soldiers, they don't be weak soldiers, they stand firm on your word and they don't compromise, Father God. We're asking that, Lord Jesus, that all those out there that are seeking a closer relationship with you, that, Father God, that you, you touch you. That you speak to them, you comfort them, Father God, and bring them on into your home, Father God. We ask you right now, Lord Jesus, that you just have your way with this ministry that we've given to you, Father God. That this is not our ministry, but this is your ministry, yes. Father God. You have just assigned us, Father God, to work into this ministry, Lord. And we ask that you continue to keep your hand on this ministry, continue to keep our minds steadfast on you, keep our direction, Lord, in your direction, yes. and not our own direction, Father God. So, Father God, just have your way and just be a blessing and just tear up things that don't need to be there, Lord yes. Jesus. Rip things out that don't need to yes. be there, Father God. Up through Jesus. stomach blocks that don't need to be there, Father God. Father God, we ask that you tear down the strongholds that yes. come up against us in the name of Jesus. Name and we Jesus. thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. And we give you all praise, yes. all glory in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm telling you, praise God. God was fired up in this place. I'm telling you, we have some anointing up in here. I know some of you tried to make it. I saw it, but you just didn't know where to find it. But that's okay. As long as you kept tuned in on that phone while you was trying to get here, you couldn't get it. You got what you needed. You didn't need to be in the place to get what you needed. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I just want to say to everybody, next week, praise God, we're going to be going into our Reach Ministry Bible Study. Praise God. We're going to have our very own David. Brother David is going to be teaching on First Corinthians chapter 8. So you don't want to miss it, praise God. So tune right back in here at 2 p.m. on next Sunday to receive a powerful teaching in the name of Jesus. I say God bless you. God bless your families. And may the Lord continue to be heavenly in your life. God bless you. Amen. Amen.